Hi folks, Tormach 770 steel feeds and speeds. No, this is not deja vu. When we left off in that last video, I kind of gave up on the full depth of cut and it bothered me. And we had some awesome emails and input and comments from folks on what is going on? Why we should be able to do this. So take a look. We got it. So there's a little bit of noise to that cut. I wouldn't say I absolutely love it, but two takeaways in this video. One, we learned a really cool trick in PathPilot when you're doing testing like this to automatically offset and update your work coordinate system, which makes it so easy and so nice to run tests like this. The second thing is let's talk about what's happening and why I think we're able to now do this better. So I often say surface footage doesn't matter. That's a, a little bit of an exaggeration. Yes, it matters. It matters especially in certain materials, it tends to be more exotic materials that have a narrower band of acceptable surface footage to cut them. Your basic aluminums, your basic steels, they're relatively forgiving and the chip load per tooth is what really matters. The biggest crime I see folks commit is they rub, meaning they don't take enough of a chip load per tooth. Here's the thing, I'm pretty sure, we've put an indicator on this, I've got what I would consider an unacceptable amount of tool run out. It's about eight or nine tenths. Five tenths I'd be okay with, nine tenths, here's the problem. If you're doing a one thou per chip load cut, half of that at 180 degrees is going to have almost no cutting, and when you go to the other half of the tool as it's rotating, it's gonna double up. You're gonna create a ping-ponging with that tool. One of the ways to solve that is actually to increase your chip load per tooth because it means your runout is less as a percentage of the cut. Here's the other thing, I'd never thought about this. Width of cut. The more width of cut that you take, the more engagement you have of the tool in the cut. And as you can see here, what happens is that as the first flute leaves, you've got this more engagement from the second one. And obviously the flutes being helical aren't an exact representation of this, but the problem can be with a very little width of cut, you've got the one flute completely disengaged from the workpiece as the second one then comes in again, potential to get that ping-ponging. The other thing is harmonics, and harmonics are a funny thing because sometimes you wanna increase your surface footage, sometimes you wanna decrease it, sometimes it has to do with just a phenomena of physics. And uh, Tim, thanks for your comments in the last video. You know, harmonics are very real, and I've talked to some guys who have dialed in face mills on VMCs where sometimes it's just an RPM band that it just works and there may be some science behind it, but it's more, you just have to play with it to see and if they move that machine, it may change a little bit. But for me, I wanted to figure this out and I knew the only way to figure it out would be to take test cuts. And it's such a pain in the butt, in my opinion, to keep having to update PathPilot, remember if you did it or not, I wanted it done automatically. How do we do that? G10 L20 P1 Y0, what does that do? It's a PathPilot or Linux CNC thing that will automatically update your work coordinate system. So we just added some code to the end of a Fusion 360 2D contour that just walks across this part. And so at the end, it moves to Y a positive 0.05, so 50 thou width of cut. And when it's at that location, G10 P1 is for G54, that work offset, set the current location to Y0. So now I can just keep hitting cycle start, and every time I hit cycle start, it's gonna rerun that pass having moved back 50 thou. What that lets me do is it lets me play, and I don't have to have the mental burden of thinking about where my coordinate system is. So let's try it. Let's run that cut again, and listen, and then let's adjust the feed rate and the RPMs. So now 130% feed rate. Starting to hear the, the spindle bog down for sure, but still getting a good surface finish. Reset the feed rate, let's try a higher RPM. We'll bump it up right when the cut starts. There's that chatter. Back it down a little and it's gone. It's so sensitive, just a 5% 
uh, override was the difference there between hearing that harmonic chatter and getting rid of it, which is so, like for scientifically, that's so cool. Not being super happy with right exactly where that cut sound to your ear is such a good thing. Let's play around. This has, it's not chatter, I just don't love the sound. Let's get something I like better. And it may just be the spindle bogging down, but I don't like it, so. Let's decrease the feed rate and increase the RPMs. So we're now at 3,400 RPMs and 28 inches a minute. Oh, that's better. Starting to hear just the whisper of chatter. 83% feed, which is 3440. 3,400 RPMs and 25 and a half inches a minute. Yeah, I like it. You can use the PathPilot overrides or you can just hop in and edit the code. Just keep hitting cycle start and keep plugging away. So folks, take advantage of this. Use the tool you're gonna use. I'd like to say that that should be a sharp brand new tool, but if you're gonna be running a job with a used tool, then set this up and run it with that tool. Remember, there's so many other factors that matter in your work holding, your tool holder, tool deflection, choke up as much as you can, please. And don't be afraid to experiment. Link in the video description to both the speeds and feeds for this, as well as the G-code that has the automatic Y offset and update. Folks, go play, go have fun. Hope you enjoyed, take care. See you soon.